Hey guys, thanks for watching. Today I'm with Bertie Cordell from England. Hey Bertie, how are you? Hey Brendan, I'm very well. Good that we haven't sort of caught up in a while. Yeah, Bertie is the inventor and the uh, he runs a company called DST Golf, which is delayed strike technology. And uh, he has this famous club that he invented that's bent backwards. That was the uh, kind of the, the first thing. So, uh, and he's a real expert on impact in golf. I know a lot of coaches, Bertie, will they'll always say like, hey, like, you know, let's improve your impact. Let's improve your impact. And then when you go through the lesson, you improve your backswing and you improve like your chicken wing or you improve like where your head is. But the impact seems to be the thing that's most important, but also the most stubborn to change. Have you found that? Yeah. I mean, essentially, it's all very well. Um, you know, I, I think uh, it, it is a stubborn thing to learn because it, it is an unnatural uh, uh, movement. It's an, it certainly it, it's an exaggerated position. Uh, when you put average golfers, club golfers into the impact position and say genuinely that's where you should be at impact, they tend to say that's that's like massively exaggerated. I, I wouldn't have understood that or realized I need to be in this position. I mean, it feels like there's a lot more weight in your lead side. The hips have rotated a lot more than people expect. The chest is rotated towards the target and then the handles in a, in a, in a forward position. So unless you're put into these positions, most people wouldn't naturally get there. And I think you're from, I don't know, you, from your experience, Brendan, you, you, you diligently go and talk to a lot of people about the golf swing. In your experience, do people talk about the impact position first or do they learn golf like most people, as in grip, stance, posture, alignment, and then they learn the backswing. Yeah, I think most people, um, most people can't get the ball in the air when they first start. I think it's kind of the uh, vicious cycle of getting better at golf. So they dribble it to start. So they're dribblers at first, and then they have to figure out something to get it in the air, you know, and that a lot of times you will be, you know, throwing loft through the shot. And then once they do that, they get it in the air, they slice it about... 90. So let's just go back to that. When yeah. you say they dri when you say they dribble it, do you mean they top it? They yeah, either either they top it or they hit the ground first, and then it skips off the ground and and tops it. So uh, I don't even think people really have a concept of hitting the ball and then the ground. I think they think that they have to do some kind of scooping thing to get it up. I completely agree with you. Essentially, one of the most dangerous uh thing or not dangerous the most damaging thing psychologically um is that once they've sculled it you know topped it a few times they think well i've got to get it in the air so i've somehow got to get under the ball and then of course you introduce a tee or put it on top of a plastic tee on a mat mm -hmm. so you've yeah. got the opportunity to lean back and then you, yeah. if, if you do hit one right then then it comes out it feels good it goes in the air in the general direction of the target you think bonzer i've done it and then, of course, you take the T away, and then they they they, they, they compounded the error. They're practicing right. the wrong movements. If anything, and their weight is going onto their back foot rather than towards the their right. front. Somebody had said to me that was the big in innovation with Top Golf is that everybody dribbles it. So you can't really do it like if you go out bowling, you know, like anybody can do it, and then you can put the bumpers up or whatever. Like anybody can kind of do it, but yeah. with golf, if you, if you're just starting, everybody's dribbling it. There's no fun there. So but when you put it on those levels, it'll go somewhere because you're dribbling it off the front and it'll go somewhere at least. So they, they said that was the really brilliant thing about Top Golf. I wanted to ask you because when last time I saw you, so Bertie came out to California and we did a series of videos like uh, almost three years ago now. And um, you were talking a lot then about the impact curtain and the impact line on the club, which I had put on my clubs and I think is great. And recently, you've been talking about some other drills that you came up with that you think are even that might even be more powerful than like what the curtain was. So remind us of what the curtain was, and then what, kind of the, some of the things you're doing now. Yeah, so I mean, they go hand in hand. Essentially, the curtain is the first and foremost. There is no ball to hit right in this drill. So so immediately, the obsession with looking at where the ball flies and seeing if it's mm -hmm. got a slice or a hook or whatever else that goes out of the window. So the task is very simple. Yeah. You place you place a curtain, or it could be a cardboard box or a mattress or a big pillow up against a wall, and you stand with that object outside your lead foot. So opposite mm -hmm. and outside your lead, your lead foot. And the drill is very simple. You're just trying to get the handle of the golf club or the, 
the, the entire shaft of the golf club to make contact with the curtain at the same time as the club head. Yeah. Uh, and that forces the handle. I'm not sure if you can see my hands here. Forces sure. the handle to be sort of opposite your, your lead thigh or in front of your lead thigh when at the same time as the club head. And most people start and flip and the club head hits the curtain before the, the rest of the shaft does, which yeah. invariably means the handle is too far back and you would have you would have flipped. So if there's no golf ball to hit and the sole purpose of the task of the drill is to strike the curtain with the full length of the shaft hitting the curtain at the same time, you're, you're, you're using different muscle, muscle movement patterns. And, and suddenly yeah. it's, it's not about hitting a golf ball. It's just about can you put the shaft or can you develop a movement where your hands are leading the, the club head through where the ball would be and developing that movement pattern with your, your legs and arms and your body and your hands. And the answer is everybody can do it. Everybody can do it. I mean, you, you, my, my sort of 75 year old neighbor just, you know, thought, let's go and put Don on this contraption and see if he yeah. can do it. Sure enough, yeah. the first swing, he's never played a day of golf in his life and he did it, you know, straight off the bat. He did it straight the, the very first swing. And then I compared him to Lee Trevino and they looked almost exactly the same. It's it extraordinary. So, yeah. so it, it's, it's only when you introduce the concept of the ball being back there that people want to go back and revert to the movements that they've always done, which is, you know, the, the body stalling out and the arms flipping and the hand, hand stopping and, uh, and then the swing arc or the bottom of the, the low point of the swing arc is too far back, which is invariably where the problems begin. That leads on to the next drill, which I kind of coupled with the, the, with the, um, the curtain drill. It, it's a, I haven't invented this, it's just a very old drill. You just basically put a chalk line down so if you're a guy who goes to the driving range, yeah, just just get a bit of chalk, a stick of chalk, put your golf club down, and draw a line, you know, right in between where the the, the, the tee is and where you're standing. So it sort of dissects your stance essentially. So yeah. you've got a line in between your legs moving away from you. Put that line in the middle of your stance, and then all you've got to do is take your 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 divot after that line. And invariably, most people won't be able to do it. It it, it seems such a simple thing to say but when people try and do it invariably they hit the ground before the, the chalk line or you know on the on the, on the opposite side of the uh, target than the than the chalk line and that's purely because they're not used to moving their hips and their their, their body into the ball okay xander so what i want you to do is set up and i want you to hit the mat on that side of this line yeah. okay go ahead Just little swings at first. There you go. Small swing, hit the mat though. Perfect. All right, do that again with a little bit bigger swing. Okay. Yep, you got a little nip, but let's actually hit it a little bit more. Perfect, perfect. Their sternum and their, the center of their pelvis is, is too far away from the target they've got to somehow you know you've got to turn on the backswing and keep your head i hate using this expression but keeping your head still basically doesn't sure. mean it going up and down it can go up and down but your head if it, if it sways too far that way in the backswing then it's got to come an extra distance and go even further to get your sternum in front of the ball yep so, so i think that's where a lot of confusion happens when people say keep your head still it invariably means you know, you can move up and down a little bit as long as it doesn't sway. If it sways off the ball, it's a killer. So, so in order to do that drill, you need to get, you know, the stack and tilt guys do it really well because essentially they're just rotating in the backswing rather than swaying in the backswing. Yeah, I would. Sometimes I do a like you. You go on Google and you can do an academic search. So just so just for papers, and so, sometimes I'll do that and I'll search for golf. And there was a, I think a Korean study or something where they were trying to tell the, the bio, biomechanical and other differences between good golfers and bad golfers. Yeah. And one, and one thing that they saw that I hadn't heard before was that good golfers, I guess on, in your neck, this is C6 or something like is here. Yeah. And they saw, they saw how stable C6 was in the good golfers and in yeah. the bad golfers, how wobbly it was. And uh, so I, I think you're onto something there. The the one thing I was wondering though, this is the question, the, the big question that I ask golf instructors, especially since I've become a DST certified coach and I really believe in everything that that you've uh, that you're talking about. So the question is, 
good golfers are able to do two things. Uh, bad golfers are able to do none of these things. And okay golfers do one of these things, but not the other at the same time. And what that is, is the shaft leaning forward in impact, okay? So, so uh, some golfers can get the shaft leaning forward at impact, but in order to do that, they get an angle of attack that's down like maybe 20. Uh, and then some golfers are able to have a appropriately shallow angle of attack, like uh, one of the guys that uh, you know, and, and then that we really admire his swing, John Rom, like with his irons, he's hitting down, but he's only hitting down like three or four or something like that. Very few golfers are able to get the shaft leaning forward at impact and an appropriately shallow angle of attack. Because if somebody has a shallow angle of attack, almost always they get it by scooping at it through impact. And if somebody has a, a shaft leaning forward, they almost always get that by going down. It kind of seems to be the sweet spot of really good golf is to get those two things together, which seems really tough. So typically when you see golfers who are able to get the shaft leaning forwards, but they have a very steep angle of attack, they are mm -hmm. invariably coming out to win and very steeply out to win because they're chopping down on the ball. And mm -hmm. if you look at their strike pattern or the more, more specifically the low point of their swing arc, it'll still yeah. be behind the ball, right? The reason why they haven't shallowed the angle of attack out is because they haven't shifted their pelvis and their sternum forwards, and that naturally shallows out the the the, um, the the angle of attack and also takes the low point forwards in the swing. So, so I completely agree. When 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 people do get um, forward shaft lean and they they get steep on it, or the look the numbers on the attack angle look steep, it's because the low point's too far back in their stance. So yeah. th that's the reason why the chalk drill is so good because it does. That's the shallowing out bit. Okay, so so essentially, if you if you combine, the, so a, a perfect strike with an iron we're talking about here is to have forward shaft lean and also the low point in front of the, the mid midpoint in the stance, and that will shallow out the attack. So the two elements are the impact line helps you with the correct handle position, and the club face being square to the target. If it's uh, it runs along the lead groove, it'll you'll have a square club face in the handle forwards. That gives you the, the lag impact. But getting the, 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 the strike or the low point in front of the chalk line is the other element of getting that, that shallow strike. Okay. Um, and and for, the, for those guys who are getting the handle forwards and, and, and getting steep on it, then the chalk line drill is perfect because it helps them understand that when they're at the top of the backswing, the, the best ball strikers in all, well, all of the PGA Tour players and also the best ball strikers of all time, they get to the top of the backswing and they've already got their weight onto their lead side. But it's, if, if, you're trying, if you're at the top of the backswing and you're still over favoring the trail side, it's too late. You, you're, yeah. you're just going to dump it out and you're going to stall the club out and, and, and your low point's going to be behind behind the ball. That's the sort of the combination lock, so to right. speak, of, of, of better strikers is that they've got their low point forwards and the handle forwards as well. Yeah, and one drill you were talking about for to kind of learn this that you were telling me is like draw that chalk line kind of thick there and through your center where the ball is, and then start feeling like, hey, well, how does it feel to make it go in to out to straight to make it go left to right? And yeah, I mean that, that's that. So so the guys that you know, we were just talking about, if you get steep on it, you're coming out to win. So yeah. one, one drill would be to sort of put three dots in front of where the golf ball would be. One dead in line with the target, one to the slightly to the to the outside of the ball, and one to the inside, and and to try and feel like when you well, after you've hit the ball, you're swinging the club out to you know to like first base for you baseball players sure. you know, to feel like into out pattern for a for a draw, and conversely for an out to win pattern for a fade. Now I'm going to make it even tougher. I want you to hit the mat, but then after you hit the mat, I want it, I want you to hit it towards first base that way. You know what I mean? Yeah. Make the path go that way. Show me towards first base in slow-mo. So hit the mat, no, 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 normal stance, but make the club go towards first base. Up and swing, perfect, and through. Yep, good. Hit, pass the line and make it go towards first base. That was a little nip, but not much. Make sure it goes towards first base. Put your feet straight, there you go. Feet at the pitcher, swing towards first base. Right. Nice. And for all those guys who get steep on it, they'll be doing that 
you know, coming across it, hitting it to third base. Uh, right, type. right. Um, but yeah, no, you're right. Strike, strike, uh, divot, divot patterns is one of my favorite drills because it kind of opens people's understanding to, you know, hitting the inside of the ball rather than the outside of the ball type of thing. Yeah, we're going to put some, some of these drills up on this video. So stay tuned. When I talked to you and you came out here and we did videos about the DST, you had like some kind of crazy stat where um, the DST with the bent backwards club, you're like, it's been in the hands of like 23 of the top 25 players at the time or something like that. No, and, so uh, 20, 27 of the top world's top 30 players had it in their bag. Wow. So it was, it was it, when it, when it, when we launched it, it just went crazy. I mean, it, it, it was, it was helped by the fact that when you've got, you know, the world's most famous golf pro teaching professionals using it. So, you know, the, the, the likes of, um, uh, uh, Pete Cowan and um, and Butch Harmon and you know they they were pushing it onto their stable of players. So and once other yeah, the, you know, the the junior aspiring tour players seeing it in the senior tour players' hands, it's yeah. like what have they got? I want one of those type of things. So it went it went crazy and to the point where now we've got you know some pretty long term users of the golf club. Um, now I mean you know we've we've had I think one of the early adopters was um, uh, Justin Rose and uh, Henrik Stenson. And um, they, they were big users, and they—they, they, I think, I think, did, did Henrik finish silver medal in the Olympics? I think he did, didn't he? I think it was so. Justin, Justin, Justin won, won gold it, yeah. medal, and Henrik came silver medal. Okay, uh, yeah. And then Henrik won that Open Championship at Troon in sixteen against um, Phil. Yeah, uh, against Phil. I, exactly. That, that, that right. I remember. I think the first time I saw it on a golf forum was yeah. People were thinking that. Uh, Henrik Stenson had like a broken club or something. They're like, what is this? And it was on Golf Channel. What's really exciting is that uh, and now in 2023, uh, we just saw last week, John Rahm, who to, to me is the number one player in the world. I think the, the ranking system's broken because he's, he's won the last two weeks and he's won like five times in the last three months or something. So John Rahm, he, uh, there was a video that came that we're going to show from Hawaii where he's still using it before like, and this was right before he won in Hawaii. So John's like consistently used it. Cause we saw like three, three years ago or more, he was using it. And like, it just always stayed in the bag. I saw him last year at the U S open, he was using it. And then now. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's had it in the bag since I met him at, um, well, funnily enough, it was at the same tournament that Henrik won the, uh, the, uh, Royal Shroon in 2016. It was, uh, it was John Rahm's very first tournament as a professional golfer. I know it wasn't okay. serious, but he qualified. He qualified for the Open Championship as an amateur, and then he uh -huh. reneged on the invitation because he wanted to turn pro. And um, and I met him on the range then, and he he just basically loved it ever since. So it's it's been a staple in John's bags for the last. Oh, seven years. so you walked up to him and you said, "Hey, check this out," or yeah, or how did, yeah. How did so that we, go? We, we 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 just got talking, and um, in fact, I've I've just posted a video you know, remembering those days. And um, yeah, I think I've even got a slow motion video of him using the golf club for the very first time. Yeah. At that point, I didn't really know who he was, you know, it's some, yeah. he had a very pretty, pretty thick, uh, you know, uh, Spanish accent in those days sure. and, and he, he, full of confidence. And it was like, you know, who is this guy? It's extraordinary. And um, yeah, no, so he's, he's used the club every single day and he uses both the eight iron compressor and the, and the wedge compressor. And Dave Phillips, his his coach at the TB, TPI, um, you know, calls up every so often and says, "Can you send some more because he's he's kind of worn them out type thing. He okay. needs some replacements." So he's he's constantly trained um, and warmed up with that golf club. In every, as far as I know, in every single range session he has, and all it does is just it, it kind of it's like a it's a safety blanket for him. It kind of he already lags the club. He already knows he's one of the best you know lag impact guys out there. Um, oh yeah, but but for him, it just it's a comfort blanket. It's kind of like it feels good for him to to be even more delayed than a straight shafted golf club. So mm -hmm. you know where a normal, normal head would be with a straight shaft, this you know the compressor is going to make contact with the ball even later than a normal golf club would. So it kind of just endorses that kind of lag feeling through the ball, which basically just gives him even more control with the with the lead hand above the point of rotation on the handle. Well, we've seen recently. He's he's ball striking wise. I think uh, I was watching Simon Holmes on the on Sky Sports, and uh, you know you're starting to mention the great ball strikers. 
um, in the game of golf, not just currently, but in the game of golf, you've got, you know, your, your Hogan's and your um, and your Trevino's and, and Woods. And now you're starting to mention Ram in there as well, because he's just he is just metronomic with his his consistency. It's unbelievable. Um, yeah. And then combined with like 184 miles an hour ball speed on the driver. Yeah. So it's like a yeah. crazy combo. But he but he does something a little different with the DST than I had originally done. Like, I think what John does is like, he puts it in a normal ball position and then he tries to hit low cuts like for 20 shots before he puts it away. Yeah, and... so, so I mean, like for, for anybody who's using the club or has used the club, you'll notice that if you put your normal swing on it, you, you'll be fetching golf balls out of the car park on the left side of the, the driving range because yep. you know, if, you, if, you, if you flip the compressor due to the weight of the shaft, it, it yeah. wants to rotate super quickly. So John's drill is the is is like hitting hold off low low cuts and not many people can fade the DST compressor but John he can sure. talk to it you know it's this extraordinary thing to watch yeah and that's the thing that I've noticed when I when I use it almost invariably my first couple balls with the compressor like I top it because it's shorter and like it seems like just like you're saying with the chalk line drill you have to wake up your body in order to be able to stay ahead of you know to keep the club from uh, kind of getting shut down. Yeah. And then once you kind of wake up your body, you can start hitting it, but it'll draw. And then kind of the final level is, is, you know, really nice. Like if you're on grass, like you're not digging it too deep, but you're hitting it low. And that's like, uh, and, and maybe making it appeal a little bit or just for me, I'm just trying to hit it dead straight. And it's a, I like to have an open stance with a little bit too, a la Lee Trevino. So okay. it's something that I really like. And, um, and then the other thing too with it is that uh, the DST, my clubs and the DST compressor has the line on it. And if you just take some slow motion swings from about like knee high to knee high, feeling that that line is going to be at your nose, it, it does surprise you. Even if you're, you know, a long time golfer, you're like, wow, like I got to be up here. It feels like you're presenting like negative loft at impact, but you're not, but you're like, wow, that is like you said, it's it's a it's an extreme feeling. I do a lot of work with um, without golf balls, and I do a little a little bit of work with people just f trying to place them in into a position where they are open to experiencing a new a new feeling through the ball. And if you ask someone to show you their, you know, if you start, you know, you say to someone, show me your impact position. Invariably, they know their handle should be forwards, and they they kind of somehow mimic similar to where they were at address. But then if you put a club in their hands with the impact line in, mm -hmm. which essentially is an 11 degree angle on, on, on this uh, leaning off shaft lean, and then you put weight into the lead side and then you rotate their hips and the, their, their torso towards the target. It's such a wake up call that even guys, I was talking to some guy who was a plus four handicapper, only a sort of like 17, 18 year old, very talented guy. Yeah. He, said, um, he said, that surely is not the right position. I said, that, that's exactly the position and that's exactly the response that most people give. It's like, that's exaggerated. That can't be right. And right. It's, it's just one of those things, you, you, you know. So it's one of those things that the impact lines being on your golf clubs, it, it's such a useful thing to have because essentially it reminds you of where you need to be before every single shot in the bag with every single club in the bag. So you, you, you know, and, and if, if, if there's one thing that's important, there's one element in the golf swing, which is um, a fundamental. And I'm not talking about a fundamental like grip, stance, posture and alignment, like, you know, the like statutory, learning fundamentals, pre, yeah. pre, pre, pre swing things. One fundamental during the actual golf swing, it's to reach a lag impact, because that basically means you're controlling the handle with both hands, your lead hand above the point of rotation and your trail hand below the point of rotation when you make contact with the ball. And if you're making contact with the ball and you flip it, you're only controlling the club with one hand. So yeah. it, it, that's the reason why golfers tend to plateau. They reach a sort of level where they can only get so good. It's because you, you can only get so good, of, good at golf when you're controlling the club with one hand. And that's the reason why, you know, they pick out, they've got a two-way miss. You know, you hit one right and one left and they go home frustrated. Uh, yeah, that's, rem more. that's reminding me of when you were out here and, and you take you, it's an interesting, I have to show people, but it's an interesting kind of drill you do where you push the club, like say like on somebody's foot or like against a curb or something, you push it and you have your, your grip on it. And then you let go of everything except for the pressure point being here and here. So they're really far apart. 
Yeah. And whereas most golfers, when they're flipping through it, like the pressure points are like really close together. Uh, I'll, it's a, uh, it's something more visual that I have to show you, but when you get that leveraged feeling through the ball of, you know, it's almost feels like, even though you're holding like this, like you're hitting it, like with a split grip or a hockey kind of thing. It's, yeah. it's a strong feeling. It, it, and it's one of control. It's a feeling of control. It's uh, yeah. It, but in order to deliver that, like you said earlier on, when you're hitting fades with the DST compressor, your body's got to be really active to get the handle into a position where it is in a lag impact like that. So yeah. like you said, you've got to be really proactive with your body through the, through the ball. And if you get lazy, then you're just going to stall out and flip. Right. The, the last thing I wanted to talk to you about was Milo Lyons, who's on my channel all the time. He does golf schools with me. We did, I did a, a little study thing with him sh short that he had, he had been doing for a while. He's got a really good impact as well. Kind of like Matt Fitzpatrick, as far as like, he's got a really good, impact but he's got a strong grip rather than a john rom weak grip and because some people had said to me well john rom has that impact because he's got such a weak grip and it matches up but i was like no there's you know plenty of golfers with very strong grips that that like the there's, there's that examples of both there's examples of both i mean it, it's, right. it's how it's how that's the wonderful tapestry of who we are i mean how you grip the club is a very personal thing and you've got examples like john rom who's got a weak grip and you've mm -hmm. got dj who grips it really quite strong with his lead hand so it's, right. uh, it doesn't but what's really matter not... how you grip it as long as, right. as, long as you've got the, 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 the movement patterns that deliver the correct wrist position that delivers a square club face. Yeah, so you would say like the, rip, the grip is a personal thing, but, but a lag impact as far as like your forearm pointing past the ball, that's not a personal thing. That's, that's a thing for anybody who wants to control the ball. That's so correct. the thing the thing that Milo and I did that I thought was really interesting was – Milo was showing that for years he had hit, had his students hit a wiffle ball off of a tee like this. And everybody's very open to the to um, impact like this when they hit a wiffle ball off of a tee up off the ground. Yeah. And I've heard so many things from different people after you were out here and we were doing all this stuff. And one of the things I heard a lot of times was, oh, the, the reason that people can't get um, open and they can't deliver a lag impact is because the ball's down on the ground. And it's a longer stick than than other things that's down the ground. So we tested that, and we took a took a club upside down, and I hit a, a golf ball with it. You know, so there's no there's no nothing other than just trying to hit it and scoot the ball along the ground. And at impact, you see like, and I did it, and some other people did it. You see like this amazing open thwack. It's it, it's like everything you would want. Yeah. So then some people said, well, no, it's actually not not just that it's down on the ground, but it's that it's a heavy weight at the end of the stick. The weight gets flung off and it goes ahead of you. Yeah. So then we took the stack system thing, which is, you know, uh, kind of like the uh, super speed sticks. It's got, a you know, no face. It just has, has a weight at the end of it. But it was the same weight as a golf club, put a wiffle ball down there and it gave people the task of, hey, just hit this wiffle ball along the ground. And after, you know, sometimes it's hard to do, but they were able to hit the wiffle ball and scoot it along the ground. And when you freeze them face on an impact, they're like this, you know, it's yeah. great. The thing, though, that then changes with a wiffle ball, with any with a real golf ball is once you start introducing. So the, the golf club face is kind of like like this. So it's a stick and then the face is off the end of the stick. Yeah. And once you introduce the face. That seems to be the thing that gets people freezing, sliding. I don't know what it is about the face, but but it it freezes the body, and they want because they want to hit it straight. And then as it flips through, it's very uh, very frustrating. So, well, I, I would what say, do you think it is about the face? Well, I don't necessarily think it's the face. I think it's the ball. I think it's okay. the it's so so the one thing about the face it could be is that they want to deliver the face square. Yeah. And for them, if they if they're coming at the ball from the outside, it means their hands have to stop to let the to let the face catch up and, and be square. So that could be one element of it. But yeah. that's where the impact line that you've got on your golf clubs is so useful because, just like we were saying, irrespective of you've got a strong grip or a weak grip, mm -hmm. you place uh, the impact line a golf club with the impact line behind the ball, regardless of how you grip the club, it'll show you what the square club face is and what your lead wrist position needs to be in order to deliver that handle, that, that club face square with the forge shaft lean. So, so once you understand that by mimicking the impact position with your golf clubs, you know where you're trying to get to. 
and that's like when the, 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 the that's when the sort of the accelerated learning happens. People go, okay, well, if I know that lead wrist, you know, if I've got a strong grip, it's going to be more like that. And if I've got a weak grip, it's more of a bowed lead wrist. But irrespective of how you grip the club, you know what position you're trying to return back to because you can visually see the shaft, the club face being square, and then you develop a movement pattern working backwards, backwards from impact into the backswing. So you start to learn almost, um, you know, re-engineering the swing just in as out of necessity to deliver that handle position. And that's when the the, the shortcuts in the learning process tend to happen. Um, but I, I, going back to your point, I, I think the biggest, uh, other than the face awareness, the biggest problem in golf is the ball. People are so focused about getting the ball in the air and generally towards the, the target that it overrides the concept of hitting in front of the chalk line. So, so if you didn't have a ball and you just had the chalk line and you get used to hitting your movement pattern of how you're moving your body in order to hit in, hit your low point in front of the chalk line, if suddenly you put a ball there and I said to you, I don't care where the ball goes, I just want you to do the same movement, but hit in front of the chalk line, suddenly people would be surprised by the ball just gets in the way of the moving club face and it just goes pinging off the face. Um, you know, the whole adage of, you know, hitting at the ball rather than swinging through it. It's exactly yeah. that that we're talking about final thing i wanted to ask you birdie is okay why then would not why then wouldn't we just set up with like 80 percent of our weight on the lead side uh chef leaning forward and just take it back and and return it there like why why yeah i mean look at those wonderful guys back in the day who did that yeah yeah some of those old videos you see Jack Nicholas quote. Here we go. This is on my desktop. This is just, this is from Golf My Way. He says, remember that in your address position, you're attempting to mirror your impact position. For all normal shots, I establish this impact geometry at address. Because my left shoulder is always closer to the target than the ball, I simply set up with my left arm and the club forming a straight line. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, that's Jack. He's yeah. saying that that's what he did, right? So, and then you look at the guy who was competing with him at that time, and that was um, Gary Player. And Gary, if you remember, started with a forward press, not just with the handle, but also his lead knee. Uh, sorry, his yeah. track knee. So he was mimicking the impact position before he took the club back. Now, mm. I'm not suggesting for a second that everybody should preset the impact position at address. I'm saying a lot of the best golfers throughout time have got some trigger which allows them to mimic that kind of forward press before they take it back but not right. everybody wants to you know some people are in a very neutral position and i'm not trying to change what they do i'm just saying as long as you're aware that when you strike the golf ball the handle's in front and you've got the club face square then that produces a lag impact so how you go about doing that's entirely your prerogative okay thanks birdie that we've uh, really enjoyed your talk we're going to have some other videos that are going to be cut in with this thing so it's a whole project for me to start to edit and whatever but um, really like what would tell us what's coming up next for your company for DST and you personally? Uh, well, so we we're, we're I can't really tell you too much, but we're we're kind of uh, talking to as we've never really stopped talking to the major manufacturers to uh, to basically try and make this technology uh, applicable to all golfers. I mean, for crying out loud, we've got John Rahm using the clubs for seven years and he's doing okay. So, so why don't we allow this technology to be put into mainstream golf clubs for every single golfer on the planet to benefit from? I mean, it's a sure. no-brainer, as far as I'm aware. Uh, as far as I'm, I'm aware. So, it's um, we're working towards having mainstream golf clubs with the impact line on, so that essentially uh, PGAs around the world allow golfers to benefit from understanding the impact during a lesson that they go to, or on the driving range when they're just slugging some balls on their own, or even under tournament conditions under the gun. They just look down at the club face and they go, yep, yeah, that's where I'm trying to be. I'm trying to be at it, you know, get, in, get into that lag position at impact. So that's kind of where we're going. And we're, we're making progress, which is good. Great, great. So I think if everybody goes to Instagram and follows DST Golf on Instagram, that's probably the best place to uh, Or, or YouTube, with, with probably even better. Oh, yeah, YouTube. Birdie has, I'll link it. Birdie has an amazing video of uh, if you play golf, you have to watch this video. I think it has almost a million views. It's really, really good, and uh, everybody should watch that. And also, really exciting is we've been talking about the DST compressor. If you want to try the DST compressor, Be Better Golfers get a discount using the promo code DSTBeBetterGolf, all one word, 
at dstgolf.com. Uh, you can try it out. And I think it's a 15% discount or something like that for uh, people who use the promo code DST Be Better Golf at Birdie's website, dstgolf.com. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Click the subscribe button. Subscribe to Birdie's YouTube channel as well. See you later. Bye.